I'm here with Jim Garvin, Chief Scientist from Goddard Space Flight Center, where uh, you've been involved with the LRO mission for a while. Uh, Andy goes way back. In fact, uh, before we even had a vision for space exploration, a group of us were thinking, what do we need to do with the moon? And LRO came to mind, and starting in 2004, we've been on the path to doing the moon right with LRO. And we're getting close now, huh? Really close. I mean, geez, we just can't wait. And in the next couple months, watching this mission finally fly, you know, it's like a lifelong dream for a lot of folks, thinking that that dream really started way back 40 years ago when we first landed people on the moon. So what's the sort of historical importance of, uh, of this mission? Well, 40 years ago, we sent humans to the moon. We're commemorating that now. And back then, we realized there was something many things we needed to know, and we didn't have the time in the sequence of Apollo missions to do that. Historically, we're going back now with our eyes wide open, with measurements like, really, like none we've ever done for a planet. So by the end of August, we'll be mapping the moon as never done before, and LRO is the gateway to the new era of human exploration that your generation will get to populate and do. It's going to be cool. Wow. And the other one is Elcross. Tell me uh, why this is such a cool mission and how they're doing something really different here. Well, Elcross is really a big bang experiment where we use something left over, the upper stage that carries and pushes LRO to the moon, to come back around and impact the moon to basically try to energize the surface to look for what could be lurking within. It's an ultimate collisional digging mission. And LRO, Earth-based telescopes, and the shepherding satellite on Elcross will all examine what these permanently shadowed regions at the lunar poles are like. What's in the, what's in the soil there? Could it contain frozen water or other things? But what goes into putting together a satellite like this and getting it to the point it's at now, sitting out on the launch pad? Well, to build a satellite like LRO and the instruments on it and the, the ground systems to support it and the vehicle, it's, it's like building a cathedral. It's a lot of work. Really, it's like the ultimate jigsaw puzzle, and it all has to play together, talk together. In fact, electrical tests are going on now as, as, the, as the launch vehicle is getting ready for its liftoff. So it's, it's kind of like building a Super Bowl team. You start with the building blocks, you got an idea of how it's going to work, the strategy, as John Madden would say. We're not John Madden, we're anyway. But anyway, <laughs> um, so that's what we've done. And over the last, you know, uh, really four years, four and a half years, that's what the Goddard team with all of its partners uh, really across the world has done. We even yeah. have an instrument from Russia. Yeah, five years from the president's mouth to right. a launch pad, and right. custom made. Yep, and now LRO is, is on the pad and the vehicle rolled out um, this morning and it's getting close and we can all feel, you know, feel the rocket motors starting to, uh, to rumble as we get back to the moon. Absolutely. Anything else that people should know about uh, this launch that we're getting ready for here? I think people should think of LRO you know, as the people's mission to the moon. It's going to open the lunar frontier scientifically and for engineering so that we can design the systems to get people back. And so I, I can't, I'm tingling in excitement over the discoveries it can make. It certainly will with its instruments from the lasers to the cameras to the temperatures, but it's also the gateway to designing the flight systems that will carry young people back to the moon, is really bringing the moon up close as if you were there. And while we're not walking there, you're going to be flying over the moon as if you're in an airplane with the data sets, the, the images, the maps that LRO makes. So if we're ever going to bring the people back into this wonderful moon that we barely understand, I think LRO is, is that mission. So, you know, get involved. Love LRO. <laughs> Go LRO. All right. All right. Well, well thanks for uh, talking to me here. Sure, Andy. It's Ready my pleasure. Go. I hope you get to go to the moon. <laughs> I hope so, too. So the countdown has begun to the launch of LRO and LCROSS, NASA's return to the moon. But remember, just because that atlas has left the launch pad doesn't mean it's over. In only four days, LRO will reach orbit around the moon. Four months after that, LCROSS will make impact with the lunar surface, and all through this time, we'll be sending back images, topography, and cool stuff for you to check out. So go to www.nasa.gov LRO and keep up on all the action.